Hello and welcome to the Husky Audio Commentary. Um, I'm Dan Allen, the writer, director and editor of this film. And who else do we have with me here today? Uh, I'm Josh Fawkes. I'm the second unit director, um, the boy on the bike and the Folo. Well, you've got to make the distinction, not the, not the young boy on the bike. You're the old one who throws the milkshakes. Yeah. You're the old one. <laughs> and we've also got... And I'm Tony Ellis Wynn, who plays Vinny, the main character. Yeah. And I'm not as bad as I seem. <laughs> um, however, out of this film, you were typecasted, weren't you? Yes. The um, the next role that you got was... Uh, or do you want to tell us a little bit? Well, the, the, I yeah, followed up with a, a film about a trap. So I'm slowly descending the ladder of social acceptability. Yes. <laughs> well, that shot of her holding the uh, leaflet was actually filmed in the when we filmed the hospital scene because we didn't know what it was going to be written on, like Vinny's address. So we um, we had to shoot that later and put it back in. Um, and this was the f- that was the first day of filming with uh, with Cheryl and also um, Tony, which was also the last scene of the film as well. Um, and now we get a nice introduction to Vinny. Which was actually a free shot trailer um, to yeah. begin with, yeah. like a teaser. And it just, especially this shot, yeah, um, that's, just, nice. that's a nice shot. It's nice. I mean, because the park day took three days to film, um, well, three attempts to film, because the first day we got there, we got about 20 shots, and they were all really nice. The shots you just saw before this shot. We're all um, shot on the first day. There you go. That's Josh. That was Josh. There you go, Josh. That was your that was your starring moment. Sharing his milkshake. Um, I, I really like. This is really convincing that you do. There is actually something in there. It's really weird. You well, we we it. we put the Sony Foley sound back in there, didn't we? Oh yeah, yeah we we, did. we we added all that sucking noise back in. Um, that was a weird day. Bunch, <laughs> yeah, that was interesting. We were just like sucking through straws, like. So we got the right sound. Yeah, there's Charles Gregg and uh, Louise Ann Munro. Um, Charles is actually an IT technician, so he's not an actor, um, mm. whereas Louise is. So we sort of threw Charles at the at the deep end. But the uh, the police outfits were from eBay. Um, I thought they looked convincing, like they just convincing. like tags and and the hats and stuff. But when they arrived through, they turned out to be like strippers ones, like these little girly ties. <laughs> and then on the and then there was these little tags that go on the shoulders and they actually had like the number 69 on them so we need to like rip them off and actually now they look a bit more like emblems rather than <laughs> 69 because that would be ripped off um, so yeah um, and then Lily's house um, Lily who plays the nurse in this film we filmed a lot of Vinnie's uh, house stuff at her house um, Lily's mum actually had a police helmet upstairs because Lily's uncle is a policeman so that obviously allows the audience to forgive the rest of the police outfit, I think. Um, and then we've got um, Lily and Lisa. Hopefully. And one of the several red balloons that... Yes, <laughs> the red balloon. The way. We, um, we brought a helium canister. Um, we took about five down there because we knew we had to film it flying away, so we wanted a few for different takes. And um, well, after filming one, the rest just sort of all became untied and flew away. So we lost them all, um, and we had to do like a 30 minute round trip to go and fill some more balloons up, um, which took a chunk out of the day. One of the things that was in the first draft, it sort of, it did, it followed like a family, then another family, then the police, then Vinny. So like Vinny was the last person you met after you've already built up an understanding of what happened through other people, but then I it was more interesting to sort of cross-cut that. Um, but the idea is, though, that you see, like, different people's perspectives of Vinny. Um, the Kelvin and Posse. The Kelvin and the Kelvin Massive, um, who were actually filmed on a different day. Um, and then the cracking of the knuckles. That, that, is the, that is his actual cracking of the knuckles noise. Knuckles, yeah. Like it's the, quiet. This. That, that was genuinely the noise that he made. Um, not enhanced or anything. No, this is with good skin shots I was talking about. I added some sharpness to give you more definition in your face. Yeah, that's quite so. Make you look like you just come back from. <laughs> that's not what I see in the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then the, the interview rooms, they were just shot in front of a, like a 
photography backdrop. Like uh, my brother's got a uh, photographer's views. There's and a nice white backdrop. Yeah, and, and then there we go. There's there's Joseph on the bike. You don't play that boy, <laughs> Josh. No. <laughs> You, but Josh was filming it with dirt on your lens. <coughs> with dirt on my lens. Okay. So when I just got really into kind of photography, mm. just left that a tiny bit. True. But I now tell people how that tiny bit of dirt was put there on purpose, um, as like a um, visualization of the uh, idea that evil starts small. And <laughs> manifests itself, so the dirt gets bigger and bigger throughout the film. It's funny, I hadn't noticed that. Yeah, no. Oh, this is the really, really hot day. Yes. And I had to wear this big, heavy leather coat. Yeah. Run across the field, <laughs> pick up this heavy little boy, <laughs> and run along. And then keep on filming it. And do it over and over again. Yeah, and that was fun. Well, because, like, like I said, like, um, we tried to film this, then it started raining after we got about 20 shots, then I was ill the next time we tried to film it, and then the third time was this day, lovely day, really hot, <laughs> but obviously it was really hot, so I couldn't, I, I got sunburned, so I imagine you were mm. sweating a lot. <laughs> Love the blood effects. I, I did that myself, like, we were going to get a, um, like a makeup artist to come down and work on some of the prosthetic stuff to do like, a proper cut in his leg. But you just used a standing knife in the end, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, in the end I thought it would just be easier to uh, get the old knife out. Um, but no, I, I got some fake skin and actually made that myself. <laughs> that was my first attempt at trying to do blood stuff. But, you know, I was getting my hands dirty. <laughs> Don't like that. You can get other people <laughs> to yeah, do it for you. Exactly. It's, it's nice when I have enough crew that I can put down everything and just pick up my directing stick. Mm. Where I can just point. Yeah, that's <laughs> ideal, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. And a chair. I don't think I sat down once, except when I was editing. So, this one, um, I love the shots in this film because <clears throat> a lot of them are panned out. Yeah. And it just um, exposes kind of everything in the room. Yeah. Um, a lot of them come out. There's a scene coming up, which is um, in the last, which is... Vinny sitting on the sofa. Oh yeah, and that kind of just pans out. Oh yeah, when, when the camera tracks out, that was all done digitally. Like I knew I wanted to do it, so I just I shot oh. a wide shot. Yeah, but obviously the the zoom function on like because this was all shot on digital SLRs, uh, the zoom function doesn't work quite yeah. well. It's a bit it's hard to get it smooth. Yeah. So I just did a mini digital zoom on the computer. And it does make a noise. Mm. Yeah. And because it was only uploaded in like seven twenty p, and we filmed it in ten eighty p. You've got the pixel room to uh, to to do mini mini zooms out. I don't know why it was only uploaded in seven twenty. Because like, I think it was just file size because it was such a big file. Faster. We actually filmed that outside in the hospital. Um, you you were there. Really? Just realised it must have taken me quite a while to get to the hospital after the Sunday day. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It it did. What was he doing in the meantime? Well, that's the thing. We saw him arrive at his house. We don't know, do we? True. Yeah. That is, that is very clever. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think the idea, the reason I decided to make it night time was because there needed to be a level of urgency so that um, you knew that if you waited for the ambulance, it would take too long. So, right. Yeah. That that was my yeah. thinking. And obviously, the sun drops very fast in in England. So. He was um he was in How to Lose Friends and Alienate People. Yeah, he worked with Megan Megan Fox. Fox. Totally. If you watch behind the scenes, there's a great little story about him and Megan Fox. He loves talking about it. Yeah. <laughs> it's um, nice I love the lights in this in oh, the yeah. shots in the corridor. Yeah, it just goes on. Which wasn't actually a hospital; it was actually a school. But we ordered loads of these NHS posters. We went on NHS, and I found out that you could order them for free. Oh, that's me in the background with my dad talking um, behind. Find the doctor um, in front of a uh, a school print canvas. <laughs> yes, um, but it looks like a children's ward, which I think works quite nicely. But yeah, we ordered. Yes. We have so many NHS posters now, don't we? Too many boxes. Boxes. Got a whole boxes. Box. Oh man, I, I don't know where mine are. They're just somewhere in the house. Probably everywhere. Surprised I'm. You never somewhere. know when they may come in handy. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm hoping for. Mm. I should turn them around and use them as like mind maps and stuff. Because then, then but it wouldn't go through to the wall. Mm -hmm. If that makes any sense. 
I love there was only three locations in this whole film and it looks as if there's locations meaning like houses yeah but it looks almost like there's about seven yeah. or ten that's the only ambiguous bit in the film yeah all the, all the noises before it cuts back in yeah in the shortened version because there's no none of the family scenes um it just sort of focuses on Vinny and the police um I put that like ambiguous sound right at the start of the film um which which I think works really well um I, the, the short version might be on the DVD as well, I'm not sure. Um, but Vinny's house is actually made up of three different houses, um, which is my house, Lily's house, I forgot where else. Um, there was a little upstairs, but... Um, but a lot of the teenage stuff was all shot on different days. This was shot on a different day to this day where Vinny actually runs out. He was just chasing away no one. That was a funny day. And it looked like night, whereas in fact it was daylight, wasn't it, when you shot that? Yeah, yeah. It was not time when we shot the teenagers, though, because it's all grainy. Oh, right. When we shot you, um, even this was shot uh, midday. Yes, that's right. But you know what really sells it? It's not how it looks. It's the fact that there's such an eerie silence in this film. Yes, that's nice. I like that. And it just, it just makes it feel so dead. And then this... This is a scene that I wrote after I wrote the film and started filming it. Um, it was based upon the music. Yeah, well, no. What or an idea from the composer. I drew one picture of Vinny laying in some kind of white, um, heavenly place, holding a feather. And I didn't know how it would go into the film. But then I thought about, obviously, having his wife um, in it. It's actually my mum. Um, where to do... Uh, do a few takes of this stroking face, didn't we, Tony? Yes, I w- it was weird. quite surprised to find myself in bed with your mum for half the day. Yeah, this is quite interesting. <laughs> yeah. um, she, she was in education for leisure and was uh, desperate for another role. Oh, and yeah. I was like, I've got the perfect role for you. No talking. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, well, there was actually a line, but I cut it. Um, she actually says the same thing that Cheryl says in a little bit, which is, uh, you're a good man, Vinny. Um, which kind of adds that whole supernatural edge, just like, oh, that's weird she said that. But, um, but yeah, and then obviously you wake in a nice um, cliche film style, mm. which uh, is desperate to use. Um, oh, and one of the other things is that throughout the film, your shirts get lighter um, to kind of show that you redeeming your sins, whatever they may be. Mm. Um, and by the final scene, you're wearing the whitest of white shirts. But I actually don't think he's committed any... Well, no, what it, I mean, what it really is, is, is a reflection of how he feels, in that, obviously, he never was like a, like a pervert, which people thought he was. I mean, I've shown just the park scenes to people, and they've been like, oh, my God, is he a pervert? How, what happens in the rest of the film? But really... You spend the first half of the film thinking, who is this man? Do we trust him? And then you spend the second half sympathising with him, which it's I think... It's all about making snap judgments about people. Exactly. And it, it tries to encourage the audience to make that judgement too, so that they can then take a step back. Um, I like this when the music kicks in and he... Yeah. He uh, throws away his whiskey, doesn't drink anymore, and mm-hmm. it's all yeah, lies. And yeah. Mass redemption in, in, in two minutes. Um, and he's wearing a white shirt. Yeah, but that's the thing. Like, um, um, you can see he wears a white vest in, in this stop. So this is obviously a different day to that scene. Um, and uh, yeah, white shirt. He he is he's making that move. Um, there was actually a longer estate agent scene, which is on the DVD. So make sure you go and check that out. It's quite an amusing scene, uh, which is one of the reasons why I didn't make it into the final film, just because it broke down the whole emotional. Um, tone it a little bit too much um, but it is a really good scene um, there was a bit of it in there um, but make sure you go and watch it in the uh, extra scenes or deleted scenes bit of the DVD there you go there's our cutting room floor look she puts a hat on here oh. and then oh it's off again <laughs> it's off oh, again and she puts yeah. it on that is no matter how many times I watched this film I didn't notice it until someone pointed it out on YouTube <laughs> I just couldn't believe it because it cuts so well her getting out and then putting a hat on. I didn't. Oh. I, I didn't. I didn't even realise. I, I didn't spot that the first time. Yeah, 
this is the one dodgy bit about the hat. When she turns and watches him go up to the door, um, that you can see the the ribbon just sort of ends. Oh. That is the. I don't know why. I shouldn't be picking holes. I should be highlighting amazing things. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like this amazing yeah. actor here. Well, this is this a great transition cool. going from the police outside to the. Uh, to the. Um, I like the transition. Yeah, it's kind of nice that. Yeah. Like dark. Yeah. Thank you. And I mean, obviously, even though we had to fight with weather, we were quite lucky with the weather in that. The weather was just right for each scene, I felt. Um, like this scene, you couldn't have this scene in a rainy day, really. Unless it would happen indoors. That'd be an interesting dynamic. And this was, this was the first scene we filmed for the entire film. So I literally, in, in the uh, editing room, using the Adobe Pro Pro, I had the final scene in place, and then the opening scene with Cheryl in the car. Um, that's Cheryl Halliwell, who's Jerry Halliwell's cousin, which is really cool. Mm. So, get that one. <laughs> Where's the roof? Famous <laughs> people. Yeah. But Tony's famous. Oh, obviously, yeah. oh, obviously well, Tony is the major celebrity of the entire film. Um, well, Kelvin. <laughs> Kelvin, yeah. yeah. Celebrity in Kelvin. And it was my friend going by on his bike with his Oh, kids. yeah. Yeah, I mean, they had to... we were very lucky. We, like, they, they just randomly rode past on this take, and it was... And I mean, I mean, I planned it all. Yeah, yeah, um, quite. <laughs> I, I spent hours finding professional cyclists. But, I mean, it's, it's nice, because you get that whole theme of family, and then, obviously, the reminder about the boy on the bike. It kind of links it back to the beginning, which is yeah. one of them unplanned, nice things. And... Um, even though obviously we saw him taking unpacking the room, I thought it was important just to have that one last bit um, where you close the door. In this scene, in the short version, is a lot shorter. But in the long version, I felt like it couldn't be any shorter, just because the amount of time that is spent leading up to this moment, it would be unfair to to take away from it. Yes. Um, which is obviously the nice slow walk out, and then you shutting the door onto the past one last time. Nice boom, which unless you've got bassy speakers, you don't really notice. But it's it's just a nice little touch. Um, and then obviously you take a bit of the past with you. We sh we shot this a second time because oh yeah, our visual effects guy couldn't do. It. do yeah, and that's probably one of the most interesting things is that. All the pictures that are in the frames, like all the family pictures, they weren't there when we filmed. No, but that's right. Even yeah. even this here, when he sits down, there is no picture in that frame. I had to digitally put that picture back in. And um, this is the scene with Nick behind the chair. Oh yeah, Nick, the yes, sound recorder, and AD, <laughs> was hiding behind that chair that Vinny is sitting on uh, with a microphone uh, recording the audio. But yeah, no, we had a couple of problems trying to put the pictures in the frame, so yeah. that scene where he walks away one last time, we actually had to re-shop, re dress up the whole room like we had done like months before. Um, See, this is what I love with the music yeah. and it coming, coming out back, towards yeah. you. Yeah. I think that was probably the first shot I storyboarded, which is an interesting way of doing it. But. It would be nice if it just carried on coming back like they do on Google Maps. And, <laughs> <laughs> and it goes up into space. Yeah. At least I could. And then that's, that's, that's the end of the film. Oh, and Directed, written... And, and uh, <laughs> lovely music by Christopher Hansen, um, who I actually messaged on YouTube one time. Um, I found his music on YouTube and I was like, have you ever done any film work? And he said no. And then literally since then we've been collaborating and he's done the score for my last few films. Um, so he's... It was nice to find fun. somebody like that. Oh, it's fantastic. He's so yeah. enthusiastic. Um, oh, and and, and really fantastic good. composer. Like, good. Really good. Impressed me like every now and then he sends me stuff just like oh I just did this randomly what do you think and like every time he sends me something it's it's Amazing. fantastic and then gives me new ideas for film yeah and then it almost works in reverse like his music allows me to come up with an idea um, which is which is cool and we had that lovely song by Gabrielle Aplin um, mm, that is with the acoustic um, she's excellent I was thrilled to get that song who is Green Life. Life? Really nice. No, they they did um, some of the camera equipment. They gave us a nice discount, so I said I'll put you in credit. That's nice. Yeah. So nice and important. But thank you for watching the audio commentary, and uh, thank you for uh, for uh, buying the DVD and helping support the next production, uh, which yeah. will be 
which would be cool. So yeah, no, thank yeah. you uh, very much. Any, anything and again, you thank you. I hope yes. to uh, hope you watch the next one. Well, the, the special, yeah, the next film and the, the special features. The next film, yes. The Husky Experience isn't over yet. The Husky Experience. It could be a new theme park, couldn't it? Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> but it'd be a bit weird, though, wouldn't it? Like running through a park ride. A ride at Alton Towers. <laughs> yes. Okay, well, uh, I'll see you guys. See you guys soon. <laughs>